Game one down, 81 more to go. The San Jose Sharks lose four to one. We're going to talk about Zadina's debut, Eklund's great night, and some tweaks that the Sharks need to make, including uh, getting Cunning off the same line with William Eklund. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at Inside the Rink. I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. Proudly a part of the Locked On Network. We cover your team every day. If you want to be an everyday, all you got to do is just follow along wherever you get podcasts. Or you can subscribe on YouTube or do both. Both is great. There's a little bit extra content on the old YouTube page. So, Sharks, start the season with a loss. 4-1 uh, to one to the Vegas Golden Knights. I was really close. I thought it was going to be 4-2. to two. Uh, but with Bordolo scoring. So when Bordolo had that breakaway and all, or had a little bit of a, he had his chance there at the end. I thought I was going to like hit, have my night there. But uh, before we get into the game, we're going to talk about Zadina, Eklund, dig into what the stats said for this game and tweaks that the Sharks might need to make. Um, do want to let you guys know today's episode is uh, brought to you guys by Jace Medical. Empower yourself with the purchase of a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. So we got some entertaining hockey. I would say tonight you saw why Vegas is a defending step in the cup champion and why they are expected to make another long playoff run because um, they can play a full 60 minutes of hockey uh, the Sharks played about 35 minutes of, of hockey before the wheels kind of fell off, right? And when we get into the analytics and stuff, like the, it was a pretty competitive game, especially in the second period where the Sharks actually kind of outplayed um, them. But the Sharks are a rebuilding team, uh, a lot of new pieces coming together, um, not the star power. It wasn't even the stars for Vegas tonight. It was a lot of the, the depth pieces tonight that kind of did their damage. Um, but you saw why Vegas is a have and the Sharks are a have's not right now. And that's fine. We, we've we been pretty clear on our expectations for this team going into this season. And you just kind of saw it on, on, on the ice tonight. And even Vegas didn't even play that great game game and they still were just like well we're done messing with you guys and we're going to win four to one now so um but there was plenty of positives and plenty of intriguing things to take away and i think we have to start with one philip zadina who scored the sharks only goal tonight um but you saw a lot of positive things from him uh playing on the penalty kill right uh sharks penalty kill looked like it was in mid-season form already uh and kind of stifling a vegas power play which it wasn't the best last year. It was kind of middle of the pack, but, uh, you know, Vegas or, uh, sorry, uh, or Zadina and the Sharks uh, penalty killers were really aggressive about being kind of right there and kind of, and Zadina had a really good opportunity on, on a shorthand, uh, kind of set up a shorthand opportunity, but you saw why Zadina is such an intriguing player and his ability to kind of get to the net um you know he that's how we scored the goal was kind of getting kind of getting to that making a nice turnaround shot um and scoring the goal there but you saw great passes from zadina you saw great opportunities from zadina and he seems like he's really excited to be out of detroit and kind of have that fresh start and uh him playing with hurdle tonight uh the lines got a little jumbled with granlin who was held out uh uh the back end of of the game because of uh seeing, still kind of dealing with a little bit of injury and it was more precautionary as shang pang from san jose hockey now uh reports on the old twitter um but i think sadina again it's game one 
but you can see why he's such an intriguing player. And I think he's going to have a very strong season for the Sharks, especially if he continues to play with Hurdle um, and continues to kind of give you that effort and can stay healthy. That's the big thing with Sedina, right? Is can he stay healthy for a full campaign? Uh, we will see. And he was off to a great start tonight, had a goal, and was one of the Sharks' more impactful players. Um, another very impactful player. Our Swedish son, William Eklund. And you saw tonight, you saw, you saw it, right? Um, just crafty. Craftiness is the way I put it, right? How many gets the puck, makes a little play, and puts the puck right into Luke Cunning's just wide open and kind of can't do anything with it, right? We saw three, I counted three Cunning whiffs tonight, two from uh, Eklund and one from Bordalo, but... Uh, Eklund showed why he belongs, and that's what we want to see, right, is belong and building and becoming an, an everyday NHL player. And if you watched Eklund tonight and you were not impressed, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, um, you just saw that hustle and that, like, I'm not going to stop. Um, I'm going to compete, compete, right? That's what we hear from Mike Greer. He wants a team that can compete. William Eklund was competing the entire night, um, and... We'll talk about tweaks. Um, I don't know how long the cunning Eklund Granlin line is destined for this world. Um, I think you need to get someone who can score a little bit more with with Eklund. But actually, you know who wouldn't be a bad uh, one? Logan Couture when he gets back, because I think Logan Couture can do something uh, when given those passes. But uh, we're probably still a little while away from seeing Couture back. Um, but Again, Eklund, you just use this is what we've been waiting for. Dude looked like he was from from the get go. Uh, even coming at intros, the dude looked like he was locked in and ready to go tonight and kind of prove uh, why he's going to be the next great San Jose Shark star. Um, I'm couldn't be happier. I know he didn't get on the score sheet tonight, uh, but again, he set up some prime opportunities. Um, Power play with him looked crisp. We'll talk about the power play uh, a little bit later, uh, kind of in the tweaks uh, area, what the Sharks might need to do there. Um, but I, I very impressed with one William Eklund in, in his season debut. Um, I think also Bordolo, right? Maybe a little bit more uh, of an up and down night with him. I think on the first goal, um, he could have probably been a little bit more active defensively, uh, but you saw the creativity. Uh, you saw, you know, he did have a good a couple opportunities. Again, on the power play, whipped a really nice pass over to, uh, to Luke Cunning, who was handcuffed by it. And again, we have to kind of give Luke Cunning a little bit of a break break as this is his first regular like game action on preseason in you know uh, since December so you know it's been 10 months since he's played like a real NHL game so it might be a little bit of kind of knocking off the rest there but um you got to feel good about kind of the baby sharks and Henry Thrun too um I thought Henry Thrun another kind of impressive night he did have a, a bad kind of giveaway in his own zone but um there was a play where he basically him and Mark Stone are at the kind of top of the crease. And if he doesn't kind of gather the puck there and move it out, um, that's a tap in for Mark Stone. Like I thought Henry Thrun, again, he's played now what nine career NHL games. Like he's going to kind of make some mistakes, but he's still just, I think he looks like their best defenseman um, overall. So, Overall, though, I mean, I think we we knew what this team was going to be heading into this season. This we saw, especially against a very, very good uh, Vegas Golden Knights team. And unfortunately, it doesn't get much easier as the Sharks play Colorado on Saturday. And we'll talk about some of the tweaks here at the end. Um, and we'll dig into what the stats say for, for the Sharks here uh, in a second. But before we do that, do need to take a quick break. And talk to you guys about our friends over at Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to take care of themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected, right? Uh, whether it's a natural disaster, um, you know, just whatever happens in life, sometimes things come up. 
That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you the peace of mind so that you are not just hoping you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical will make sure that you have the medication in hand. They make it simple for you, right? Jace Medical handles everything from the online evaluation to a licensed pharmacy, medication delivery, and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Get $20 off your uh, these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using my code locked on at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. All right, so what did the numbers say? And the lines are pretty much what we expected. Uh, the one kind of surprising thing was having LeBanc uh, scratched. And so the lines from what, like I said, what we've seen is uh, Zadina, Hoffman, uh, Hurdle as your top line, Eklund, Granlin, um, and then Cunning as your second line. Barabanov, Bordalo, and then Duclair as the third line. And then a very... Very fun. Uh, Giovanni Smith, Nico Sturm, and then Zetterlin um, as as the fourth line. Um, so at least for the forward lines, kind of what we've seen. Um, it'd be interesting to see when and if LeBanc comes back in. I know they said they were still kind of working him back in from, from missing some time during the preseason. Um, but here's what we saw from the lines. So... Actually, let's start with the big picture stuff. So, my bad. Um, five on five. Uh, Vegas, 52 to 40 in shot attempts, or of course, he four. Um, actual shots was 27 to 20 at five on five in favor of Vegas. Scoring chances for were 27 to 17 in favor of Vegas. High danger chances, 10 uh, to 7 in favor of the Sharks. Uh, expected goals for 1.79 to 1.83. So pretty close there, uh, especially at five on five. Um, but Vegas did score four even strength to the Sharks one uh, even strength goal. So looking at the, so it gets a little bit funky, especially at the end of the game, because we saw like hurdle playing with Zadina or Zetterlin and Smith. And we saw kind of Nico Stern bounce around, especially as with Grandland kind of being pulled for the last good chunk of the third period. So, um, ugh. all right. <laughs> the Eklund Grandland kind of played the most five on five time at 10 42, five shot attempts gave up 13 actual shots was one to 10, which is not good. Expected goals four was 0 0.01 to 0 0.8. Um, yeah, <laughs> Um, they had they gave up 10 scoring chances, five high danger chances. Um, they had four offensive zone, five neutral zone, one defensive zone start. So not the greatest ability to kind of create and sustain offense from that line. Hoffman, Hurdle, Zadina, um, 922 time on ice together, played six shot. I had six shot attempts, gave up 13. Actual shots for was five to eight. Um, had a goal, gave up a goal. I expect goals for was 0.33 to 0.18. So they were, while they were giving up more shots, they were producing uh, more expected goals. Had a five to four um, scoring chances for and, and two to one high danger chances with two, four, and six defensive zone starts. So they kind of, they got the most amount of defensive zone starts. The Bear Banoff Bordelow Duclair line played 903, 3 to 9. Uh, in shot attempts, um, actual shots was two to three. Uh, did give up a goal. Expected goals for was 0.17 to 0.23. Um, gave one scoring chance, gave up five, had a high danger chance. Um, and then three, four to two with your zone starts. And then finally, the Zetterlin Sturm Giovanni Smith played 733. Seven shot attempts, four gave up five, uh, four to two actual shots on goal. Did give up a goal, um, and then 0.21 to 0.05 for expected goals. Two to two scoring chances, one high danger chance, four, um, and mostly four, six, and two for the zone starts there. So that fourth line was 
pretty solid tonight. And I think you saw that. That's one of those where the eye test matches what we saw on the ice. That that line kind of when they were out there, they were dictating terms. Um, Zettelin had a couple good chances. Uh, Giovanni Smith, I like, looked good as well. Um, so kind of what you expected from these from the forward lines, at least, uh, or better than expected, I think, on the fourth line. But the top three lines, though, kind of got caved in. And that's what's going to happen when you play a team like Vegas, who they're more than happy to just kind of control the pace of game. And again, the Sharks, in that second period, they they did do a good job of kind of taking it to Vegas for a little bit until the, the dam finally broke. You know, if you break down the, the second period chance, so the beginning of the game, Vegas had 16 to seven shot attempts. Second period was 16 to 16. Again, it was tied for basically the majority of the second period until, um, you know, the last three minutes or whatever, when, when Vegas scored those two, two quick goals, Vegas kind of came out and, and put the foot down for a little bit. And then the Sharks were kind of playing catch up mode, the, the back half of the game. Um, so the scoring chances are the shots are a little bit closer there. Um, you know, but I like you can point to that second period and be like the Sharks played pretty well. And if that's if they can play like that, they might have a chance a lot of nights. And uh, again, I also think Vegas was kind of like, let's just do what we need to do to get in and get out of in and out of here. Um, but you can definitely see where, especially after that power play that Vegas got um, in the middle of the second where they just kind of put the their foot down, put the hammer down. It was like, we're just going to kind of put you guys away so we can move on to our next game because we don't want to mess around with you guys anymore. And that's what Vegas does, right? They're very good. They are a very good hockey team uh, who's, going to probably be on a very deep cup run again this year like let's not lie to ourselves about it so um we'll get into what capo kakinen's night look like here uh in a in a minute but um wanted to kind of look at, at what the defense looked like and i you know i think we saw kind of a lot of the issues that we worried about with the defense and just kind of not being able to to get the puck out of the zone kind of having to ask them to play like perfect defense all the time. And that's kind of what, what you saw tonight. So um, the Corsi um, for the defensive pair. So the Faro Burroughs pair was actually not too bad. Um, they had a 58.62%. Uh, so shot attempts whenever they were on the ice, um, they created 17 shot attempts and they gave up 12. Thrun Ruda, uh, 12 shot attempts for 16 against at uh, 42.86. And then the Vlasic Benning pair, uh, 28.57, uh, eight shot attempts and then gave up 20. So, um, you when the, the Vlasic Benning pair was on, Vegas kind of did what they wanted tonight. And it's going to be interesting to see what Quinn does to try to f- move forward. Um, Vlasic and Benning, you know, it's yeah, we'll see. I, I wonder how long this pair stays together. Um, but you have to be, you know, the Ferraro Burroughs pairing, you have to feel pretty good about it after one night. So, uh, we'll get into Capo Kakinen's night and then we'll talk about some tweaks that maybe I would look to make. Um, again, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater here, but let's make some tweaks that moving Luke Cunning off William Macklin's line, uh, make some tweaks here. We to get ready for Colorado. So, uh, and maybe what the sharks might have to do if Mikel Granlin isn't ready. So, um, but before I do all that new, do need to take a quick break. Talk to you guys about our friends over at sleeper. NHL season is here, guys. We made it. Even though the Sharks lost, it was just nice to be online and enjoying hockey with you guys again. So um, I love the NHL. I know you guys do. That's where you literally listen to a podcast about the NHL. Uh, I want to tell you guys about the Sleeper app. The Sleeper app is the official daily fantasy app of Locked On NHL Network. And it's my go-to for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey. With Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash on daily fantasy um, the NHL has never been more exciting. There's so many fun players to root for, including players on your own team, right? 
Phil Sedina, William Eckron, Thomas Bordalo. Uh, if you think one of those guys are going to have a big game, um, you can make some money off it. Just pick more or less on stats for these stars. Uh, they have plenty of things to choose from, like goals, assists, um, saves, plus minus, bunch of, of blocks. If you're in Mario Ferraro, want to pick some blocks. Um, you heard me, Sharks fans, 100 times payouts on sleepers. So start paying attention and get your picks right, and you could win big. Use promo code Locked On NHL, and you'll get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's Locked On NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details. All right, Capo uh, Kakinen's night. Um, he was okay. I think he was okay. Is kind of the best way to put it. Uh, the first goal. I don't know what Kyle Burroughs was doing. Um, he's like the like the lineman in, in football where they just like kind of take the guy all the way off the field, but he just did it in the, the forward into the crease. Um, and then, like I said, I think Bordolo kind of got a little bit lost there. Um, I can't remember who the other forward was with him, but not what you really wanted to, to see there. Um, the Hay goal, which was the, the slap shot kind of a uh, one timer. He was pretty square and you would like to kind of have a, a little bit one on that. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of the same, same old, same old with, with Capo Kekin and like, you would have liked to have at least another one here or there, but um so Capo Kakinen, 31 shot attempts, 27 saves, uh, four goals against expected goals against was 2.30. This is at all situations, 871 save percentage, uh, seven high danger chances, uh, seven high danger shots, seven high danger saves, the mid danger, 10 mid danger shots. So the Sharks did a good job of kind of pushing it out and keeping um, it out, and they just weren't. Capo Kakin wasn't able to respond. So uh, 10 shots, seven saves, gave up three goals, 12 low danger shots, uh, 11 saves, one low danger goal um, given up. So yeah, it was not a little disappointing, especially after what we've seen from Capo Kakin in the preseason. Um, he did make some good saves, but he didn't, there was a couple of those I think he would want back. So um, we'll see. I think, I assume Blackwood's going to get the start on Saturday night versus the Avalanche. Um, but uh, it's a little like you felt good about Capo Kakinen. I know it's just one game and Vegas is a very, very good team, but the Sharks are going to be playing a bunch of very, very good teams to start the season. So uh, you were hoping you would kind of see a little bit more about Capo Kakinen. I did really enjoy that the, like the most, like, uh announcer jinx ever where they're like yeah capo kakin is good and then they literally give up like two goals <laughs> in like two minutes there so um power play we'll start with the the power play chaotic and what the sharks might need to do so um i'm worried of, we talked about this with max i'm worried about Granlin on the point and it the power play, especially the five unit, it is going to be chaotic, right? And especially now they're trying to kind of figure things out. You saw Vegas really attack Graylin um, when he's up there. And I don't know if he's the guy to kind of run it right now. Um, I still like the idea of the five because I think you're going to get, you had moments that looked really great and you, and you had some moments that didn't look so great. Kapokak and did make a, a really nice save, a shorthanded save there. Um, we shall see with that, but I wonder how long Granlin holds the job at the point. And I still think once Couture is healthy and gets back, that is his job to take. And I think he is a better fit for that because I think he also provides a shooting, um, aspect that I don't think Granlin has right now, but I wonder if Mike Hoffman might be potential, especially with his, uh, he can let it rip from up there. And I still think he can pass, um, pretty well. Or maybe shifting it from the point to maybe like the sidewall and kind of running the the, the power play that way, uh, kind of from one side. But we shall see. I think it's going to be a work in progress for a little bit. I do think power play two looked outstanding. Um, plenty of opportunities. Again, Luke Cunning. I don't know, man. Um, yeah, I wonder if. LeBanc, who is also a right-handed shot, 
gets into the lineup at some point and takes Cunning's place. Uh, Cunning does do a lot more, especially on, we saw him playing on the penalty kill and he looked good on the penalty kill tonight. Um, but I need some, especially for a team that's probably going to struggle to score offense. I think you might need to kind of sell out a little bit more for the offense and a guy like LeBanc who we know can score um, and can be an awesome, like, we've seen him score a million times from that spot there on, on the power play. Um, I think he could be an asset for the Sharks. So we'll see what, how long LeBanc is out of the lineup um, and what, what the Shark, again, I know Luke Cunning first came back in 10 months, but a uh, rough night for him. So I think for, for the tweaks, right, I want to keep that Hoffman, Hurdle, um, Zadino line together. I thought even though this the analytics didn't look great, you can see the chemistry going with there. Um, I think that line's got kind of a little bit of everything. I don't want to tear apart the lines right now after one game, right, especially with a, so many new pieces. But um, I will keep that line together. We'll see again if Granlin is out. I don't, I think Quinn is hesitant to put Bordolo and Eklund together. Um, but you might have to at some point because I, you might just need to try to put your best players together. And if it's Eklund, Bordolo, Duclair, Eklund, Bordolo, Barabanov, Barabanov, who was extremely quiet tonight, um, I would probably go Duclair because Duclair kind of got give you a little bit more scoring punch. And then maybe if, if Granlin is out, um, Sturm comes up and then you might have to recall a guy like Ryan Carpenter who can come up and play, uh, be a perfectly cromulent 4C. Uh, Tristan Robbins, again, is out for a little bit right now after sustaining injury in the preseason for the Barracuda. Um, and because, yeah, none of the other Sharks, I don't, I'm not positive on Zettel in. Uh, maybe you could put Cunning as your four C if you wanted to. Don't want to pull up Ryan Carpenter. Um, I think Cunning would be a fine fourth line center. Him with Sturm and Zetterlin, like that. That sounds fine to me because I think Zetterlin could be kind of the shooter on that line. Um, so that, or if you want to, like I said, if you want to bring LeBanc back up um, and take out, you know, I would take out Cunning. But again, if you're trying to work through some of the rust issues with him. So, um, but yeah, keep the power play two together. Um, I think just keep an eye on Granlin. If if that's going to be a thing with the Sharks, uh, the the penalty callers attacking Granlin and kind of making him have to think on his feet. And this is some an issue that we've talked about in a previous show of what, what happens when the Shark, when teams do that. And if, if Granlin is kind of, has it savvy enough to be able to kind of make that pass um, under that type of pressure. Um, and because if you can't really set the power play as much as a five chaotic five forward chaotic power play is awesome. Um, if you're spending your entire power play, like just backtracking in your own zone and it's not really worth it. So, um, or are they just waiting for Thrun to get confident enough to where he can take that spot up top? And then you just try to figure it out on, on the second power play unit with a, Ferraro or a Benning or whatever it is that you do there. So, um, but yeah, I, I think some jug, some tweaking of the lines. I, I would like to see if you do keep Eklund and Granlin together, I'd like to see a score there. Um, somebody who can deal with the creativity of Eklund and, and Granlin to an extent, uh, or at least his passing. Here's somebody can actually put it in the back of the net. Cause you saw Eklund do set up, teammates several times tonight and they just weren't able to uh kind of do anything with it so uh we'll be back on monday for a uh, reaction to the sharks colorado game and we'll talk about um the bear two barracuda games this weekend um also if you guys are following on youtube uh we're doing something a little bit different there i'm not going to do full game previews um because it's just like Game previews have a really short shelf life, right? If you miss a game preview, you're not going to go back and listen to a game preview episode um, before after the game happens, right? You know, it's just not doesn't make sense. So I'm going to do these little kind of one minute, like what I'm watching for for every game. So uh, make sure you guys are following along on YouTube. Those will be up the day of the game. Usually, if it's an after, uh, evening game, it'll be up some kind of 
in the early afternoon. Um, you can kind of see like the one thing I'll try to bring like a stat or the one thing I'm kind of looking for in that game. So uh, make sure you guys follow along on YouTube for that. You can also follow along, of course, wherever you get podcasts if you want to, the full episodes. Um, uh, so, yeah, just look for Locked On Sharks wherever you get episodes. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked On Sharks. You can follow me on Twitter at my Fryhole, where I post a bunch of clips of the actual games and uh, make dumb memes that people seem to enjoy for some reason. So uh, until Monday, uh, bye friends.